Welcome to the Ball Color Link Cut Flower Series. Today we'll be discussing cut flower dahlias. Dahlias are a late summer crop that continue to bloom until frost. They're usually field grown but can be grown in tunnels to extend the season later in the fall or heated greenhouses for winter production and flowers year round. Dahlias are most often grown from tubers and these tubers are available as clumps or single individual tubers. Some Karma Dahlia varieties, as well as Cafe Au Lait, are also available as URCs, or unrooted cuttings. And those unrooted cuttings are also used to produce liners, which is a rooted cutting. Ball Color Link offers the following options when ordering dahlias. You can buy dahlia tuber clumps from Edney Flower Bulb. They carry over 200 varieties that are good for cut flowers. Or you can order the dahlia liners, and they're available from several uh, different growers that we work with. And that would be some of the varieties in the Karma series and also Cafe Au Lait. When planting dahlias, it's important to remember that they do not like cold soil. So you always want to wait to plant until the soil has warmed up to about 60 degrees. You want to make sure you plant them in full sun. And they want a good soil that's high in organic matter or compost and also has good drainage. The tubers are planted with the eyes about one or two inches below the surface, and liners are planted the same depth that they were growing in the plug tray. Be sure to water them thoroughly when planting. This helps settle the soil down around the roots of the tubers, and also ensures good soil to root ball contact if you're planting liners. The liners should be watered regularly after planting. The soil should never dry out. The tubers should be watered lightly until they are sprouted and have growth that can use the water. You do not want to overwater tubers that have not sprouted and have leaves showing yet. The spacing of dahlia plants is usually 18 to 24 inches between the plants. And you can plant them either in a single row or if you have a wider bed, you can plant two rows in that bed and usually will alternate the plants in a zigzag pattern going down the length of the bed. Weed management is very important in dahlias, as it is in any cut flower crop. You have several different weed management options, and that would include hand weeding and hoeing, uh, cultivating and hilling, and hilling is where you push the soil up around the roots and stems of the plant. Uh, you can use a plastic mulch or landscape fabric. You can also use a mulch or a th thick layer of compost that acts as a mulch, and you can also use chemical weed control. If you do decide to use chemical weed control, be sure to read the label and follow all instructions and make sure the product is labeled for dahlia use because you don't want to put out a weed control product that then injures or stunts your dahlia plants. Dahlias will need support when they're growing. The plants have a nice stiff, strong stems, but they usually need support to keep them from bending and breaking off at the ground level. You have several options to use. Uh, the horizontal support netting, you can usually attach that about 18 inches above the ground, but it needs to be very firm and very strong and not just attached to the ends of the bed. So if you have a 50 foot bed, you still need to have posts on each side of the bed about every eight to 10 feet going down the length of the bed. And that keeps the center section of the bed from leaning over and having the dahlias fall over in the center, even though the netting was held in place at the ends of the bed. Another option is the Florida Weave, and this is what's also done for staking tomatoes usually. A T-post or another strong post is placed every 8 to 10 feet in line with a single row of plants, and then a strong baler twine is woven between the post and the plants and just zigzag back and forth, and you repeat that again, zigzagging the opposite direction. And you might do that two or three times as the plants grow, but once they're supported about 24 inches off the ground, they're usually okay after that. Corralling is another method where you put a stake at each corner of the bed and again every 8 to 10 feet along the length of the bed on each side. And then you run baler twine around that almost like you're putting a fence around the plants. Then you also do an X from each corner of the bed so that you have additional support in the middle of the bed. Hilling is where you will put pile soil up at the base of the plants as they grow. So you might end up burying the bottom six or eight inches of the stem. And this is also a method to uh, 
weed prevention because as you do that hilling you're disturbing the young weeds that are growing and keeping them from taking over. And then the other option is to stake individual plants with a stake and string at each plant. Um, you'll have to decide what, which of these methods would work best for your farm. Once your plants are about knee high, they'll need much more frequent watering, especially during hot, dry, windy weather. It's not unusual to have to water your dahlias two, three, sometimes four times a week in the heat of the summer. For fertilizer, you want to use a fertilizer that's lower in nitrogen, something like a 5-10-10, but you should always do a soil test before applying any fertilizer. An additional midsummer application of fertilizer is helpful because as the plants grow throughout the summer, they have used all the fertilizer that the roots they can reach, so you need to get some more fertilizer in that root zone. As far as pinching, some people pinch their dahlias when they're about 18 inches tall, and other growers allow that first stem harvested to be the first pinch. Both methods work, you just gotta decide which works best on your farm. The soil pH for dahlias should be in the 6.5 to 7.0 range. Dahlias will start to bloom about 10 to 12 weeks after planting. And then once they're blooming, you wanna make sure you keep them harvested. And when you harvest, you wanna have the flower to be about half to three quarters of the way open. And the most important part is when you're harvesting for cut flowers, you wanna cut nice long stems deep down in the plant, even if that means removing two or sometimes even four side shoots that have buds on them. Harvesting long stems will cause the plant to grow back with long stems. If you harvest little short 16 inch stems, you'll get more six inch stems. Some growers harvest into warm water and, and saying it helps with the vase life. Others say it doesn't matter. I say uh, try both ways and see if it makes a difference on your farm. Dahlias are stored in a cooler at 34 to 38 degrees. And the dahlias do have a shorter vase life than many flowers. Um, the ball varieties tend to last longer than the big dinner plate varieties or the decorative. And I like to say harvest today and sell tomorrow. Dahlias are not in a flower that you want to hold in your cooler for a week or two and then expect them to have much of a vase life. And once you're growing your dahlias, they're so productive, you don't need to hold them for a week or longer in the cooler. There's always more to pick again tomorrow. Like all flowers, dahlias do have their insect problems. Uh, the Japanese beetles will damage flowers, um, especially the lighter colors, the yellows and the the cream color. But the beetles are usually only a problem for three or four weeks in the middle of the summer and then they're done. Uh, the tarnished plant bug, you often don't see the damage that they do until much later when the bud is starting to open and the flower only opens halfway as shown in the picture at the top right of the screen. Spider mites can be a problem during hot dry weather. Uh, rainy weather or overhead irrigation usually helps eliminate spider mites. And aphids rarely can be a problem, but they occasionally do pop up on a few plants. And you can also end up having thrips on dahlias during warm, dry weather. If you're gonna use any pesticide to uh, manage any of these insects, be sure to follow the label instructions and make sure they're labeled for dahlia use. Some growers do use organza bags uh, placed over each flower bud before it uh, starts to open. And they use this to protect them from any bug damage, whether it's beetles, uh, the leaf hoppers, or anything like that. And one good thing is that the pest pressure usually is reduced in late summer and into the early fall when dahlias are in full swing and blooming with lots of flowers. There's a few dahlia diseases you need to be aware of. Powdery mildew can be a problem late in the season, uh, but again, rainy weather helps to reduce powdery mildew. But then plants grown in a tunnel are usually more susceptible to powdery mildew because they don't get rained on. You can use different uh, fungicide sprays for powdery mildew, just follow the label instructions. Dahlias do occasionally get a mosaic virus where the leaves have yellow splotches on them. Um, if you ever do have a dahlia that is virused, 
you should remove the plant and throw it in the trash. But laboratory testing is the only way to confirm that a virus is present. A lot of nutrient deficiency can look similar with yellow spots on the leaves. Um, leafy gall is caused by Rhodotus fessiens, which is a soil-borne pathogen. Tubers will show excessive sprouts, uh, either when they're in storage and you're ready to plant them in the spring. Um, plants with symptoms of leafy gall should be discarded. Dahlias are uh, perennial in a zone eight and warmer. They may overwinter in zone seven with protection and protection would be burying the plants in leaf mulch and then cover with a low tunnel, usually with white plastic. If the dahlias are overwintered in the ground in the warmer areas, plants should still be dug and divided every two or three years because they get too crowded and too many tubers. In colder areas, zone seven and colder, Dahlia tubers are usually dug and stored and replanted in the spring, or you can just let them die in the field and buy new plants each year. Some growers do start tubers in crates or pots in early spring, so they either can have a bigger plant to plant out when it warms up, or to take cuttings and increase their planting stock. If you do want to dig your dahlias, you usually wait until about a week after the frost has killed back the foliage. Depending on the soil type, dahlias may need to be washed after digging. Heavy clay soils should be washed off before storing. Use a gentle spray from the hose, not a power washer effect. And sandy loam soil usually falls off without needing to be washed. But after the tubers are dug and cleaned if necessary, lay the tubers out to dry in a uh, sunny, dry area to let them cure for several days or until the skin is turned more like a uh, leathery skin as opposed to soft skin kind of like the difference between a new potato and an older potato. You want them to have a thicker skin on them before going to storage. Some growers do dip their tubers in a mild bleach solution before drying them and storing them. This can help eliminate or reduce any mold that might happen during storage. Tubers can be divided in the spring or fall. If they're divided in the fall, be sure to allow the cut surfaces to dry before storing them. And same thing in the spring. If you're dividing your dahlias in the spring, you want that cut surface area to dry before planting them in the soil. The different options for storing tubers over the winter include wrapping the individual tubers in plastic wrap, storing the whole clump or tubers in brown paper grocery bags with the top folded over. You can store the clumps or tubers in plastic bins uh, you can pack them in dry peat moss, wood shavings, or sawdust in bins or boxes. We can even just use a, a bulb crate with a big plastic bag that has ventilation holes in it and store them in that with the tops just closed loosely or open at the top. The ideal storage temperature and humidity is about 50 degrees Fahrenheit and 80% relative humidity. The humidity is important so that they don't get dehydrated during storage. Dahlias come in a lot of different flower forms, but there are seven basic forms that would be used for cut flower production. Those would include the decorative, which has the basic uh, traditional flower form, cactus, which has quilled petals, uh, semi-cactus, which is kind of semi-quilled, uh, a ball dahlia, which the flower form is very round and usually very full of petals. Uh, the ball dahlia is also the one that's going to have the longest vase life and is usually the one that's best for using mixed arrangements, whether you're selling at farmer's markets or the grocery stores. And a lot of florists like the ball dahlias because they have a longer vase life. A pompon dahlia is basically a ball dahlia but a much smaller size. It's under a three inch diameter. The water lily dahlia has fewer petals, but uh, more space between the petals, but it's not quite a semi-cactus and not quite a decorative. And then another variety is the anemone flower. It's usually a smaller flower, only about two and a half to three inches, but has a tuft in the center and a row of petals around the outside. A lot of people refer to dahlias as dinner plate dahlias. Those are basically any dahlia that's over about eight inches in diameter 
and it can be any of the dahlia forms, whether it's decorative or cactus or water lily. It's just called a dinner plate dahlia when they're really big, the size of a dinner plate. The Edney Dahlia Catalog and more cut flower information, videos, and catalogs can be found on the Ball Cutflower webpage at ballseed.com backslash cutflowers.